Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Uh, what you see in front of you here is an iBook G3, the Snow Edition, uh, 800 megahertz PowerPC G3. And what we're going to be doing today is upgrading the memory or RAM in this unit. Now, this is a fairly simple process, so if you're not familiar with it, we're going to go through it step by step. But let's go ahead and take a look at what we're uh, working with here. Alright, so I've gone ahead and zoomed the camera in a little bit here, but as you can see, we're currently working with Mac OS X 10.4.11 for our operating system, uh, an 800 megahertz PowerPC G3 processor, and 384 megabytes of RAM. We're going to be taking up to the maximum specification, which should be right around 576 megabytes, I believe. This unit has 64 megabytes of memory uh, on the circuit board itself, on the logic board, I should say, and we're going to be adding a 512 megabyte DIMM to bring this up to its maximum potential. Okay, so the next step is we're going to start getting the uh, iBook ready for dismantling, and that involves turning the unit off and removing all power supplies. So what the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and I'm going to turn the unit off. I'll just take just a second. Alright, now that the unit's off, go ahead and close the lid, remove the power adapter, and flip it over. It's usually best to do this on a soft surface, like a towel or an anti-static mat of some kind, but I'm just going to wing it here. Okay, so next thing you're going to do is you're going to get yourself a regular screwdriver, or a coin, that works too. We're going to go ahead and remove the battery now. So we're going to move the locking uh, pin from the locked into the unlocked position, as you can see the battery just pops right out. Very simple, not hard to do at all, and uh, it's always recommended to make sure there's no power going to the iBook whatsoever when you start to remove internal components and that sort of thing. So, I'm going to go ahead and flip the unit back over now. Open the lid back up. Now we begin the process of uh, installing the memory. Button frame. There we go. Okay. So, there's two tabs on your keyboard. One on the right and one on the left, right at the top here. I'm just going to simply press those in and pull up gently. Careful not to damage the keyboard in any way. There's two tabs at the bottom. You're just going to lift up. Yeah, it's sometimes a little stuck and out. Okay. So now you just place the keyboard face down like I just did. I'm going to adjust the camera so that you can see what I'm working on here. Okay. Add some more light. Make sure the light should help. Okay. So, this right here, if you don't see this, you're going to want to skip ahead because we're going to need to remove the Apple wireless card. Now, this process is pretty simple. It's going to be a plastic tab right here on the right side of the card. Sometimes that's tucked underneath the metal bar. You're going to just want to go ahead and pop that out of there. You can use a screwdriver, pen, really anything that'll slip underneath that tab so that you can get it up and out. Now, what I'm going to do is grab this plastic tab right here. I'm just going to pull to the right very gently to unseat the airport card from its socket. It should come out just like that. There is an antenna cable that's currently still attached to the wireless card. You're going to want to go ahead and disconnect that. Get your fingernail behind it and pull it out. Okay, and your Apple Airport card should come out and should look just like that. Now, get a little closer here. Look straight down, best we can. Now, you're currently looking at the empty and the underside of your keyboard right here. As you can see, Apple included some not terribly helpful instructions, but what can you do with their Apple uh, instructions about their strong suit. There's two screws that are going to need to be removed here. There's one right here, and there's one right here. You should see them at the flat part, bottom part of the underneath where you just removed the um, Wi-Fi card. Now, you should be able to use a regular or a standard, I should say, a standard Phillips screwdriver. 
for this. But these screws are fairly small and it may require a bit of tinkering on your part to find a tool that fits. My screwdriver is probably a bit too big. Let's try something else here. Now we can go ahead and remove the uh, two screws that are on here. I'm going to include a link to the iFixit guide down below, which would probably offer much more detailed and better explanation than I ever could for doing this, but sometimes people learn better from a visual guide. There's nothing wrong with that. So, as you can see, these two screws have been removed right here and right here. And here, let's get you a better eagle eye view right there and right there. The screw should look just like this right here. Very small, small screw. Sometimes you'll take these older eye books apart and there won't be a screw to speak of in there. It'll just be floating. And I think that's the result of these units being uh, about 16 years old now, 2017, 2001, maybe about 15 years old or so. Um, a lot of them have seen hard lives, you know, they've been through school systems, they've been through um, basically just through every educational environment you can imagine, and a lot of them are very tired. So once we have that disconnected, um, we can go ahead and go on to our next step and just lift this metal cage right out. It should not be that difficult. It'll probably be difficult because it's made. Nope, pops right out. And your shield should be removed, which is good. Now, you should see we have our ram exposed right there. Just the camera. We have a ram exposed right there. And we have our connection to the keyboard right here. camera. Alright, so the next thing we want to do is take the keyboard out. Now, recommended that you don't pull on the ribbon cable too hard because it might fracture and then you need a new keyboard. Damage the socket that it's sitting in and you need a new logic board, in which case the computer is pretty much dead. Uh, as dead as you can get here. Yep, it's just a Pulls right out, standard ribbon cable, as you can see right there. There's your probably 20 pin connector, not sure. Anyway, here's the prize right here, your RAM. Now there's one user serviceable RAM slot on this unit. Now what we're going to want to do is there's two small tabs on either side, two small metal tabs, one at the top where my thumb is and one at the bottom where my uh, index finger is right here. So we're going to push in opposite direction. We're going to push up with one metal tab and we're going to push down with the other tab. See the RAM comes into a lifted position right here. So you can fit my finger under it. So once we do that, all I'm going to do is go ahead and pull the RAM out. There it is. There's our one user serviceable uh, RAM dim. And as you can see, perhaps if the camera decides to Autofocus. I really don't like how this camera doesn't autofocus. Uh, it's 256 megabytes, PC 133. So that's irrelevant. Now we're going to go ahead and install our new RAM. This is a stick that I picked up for probably $9.99 or so from Data RAM. It's a 512 megabyte DIMM. Can't get the RAM out of the package. Come on. There you go. All right. There's our new DIMM compared with the old DIMM. Seems about twice as populated, which is interesting. But, uh, said this worked with it, and I hope so, because I bought this about five months ago. That's how long this video has been planned. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and install the RAM the same way the other one came out. We're just gonna go ahead and slide it in at an angle. Careful to make sure the tab on the RAM matches up with the small tab right in the middle. I don't know if you can see that. It's Probably hard to see in this lighting, but see, there's a small tab in the middle of the memory that you got to make sure matches up. It's right by my thumb. So, I'm going to push that in, push down, made a noise. Don't know if that was good noise or bad noise, hopefully good noise. And, uh, there we go. Okay. So, now we begin the process of putting this all back together. 
making sure that's in there. It seems in there. Looks good. Okay, putting the keyboard back on as simple as slotting it back into place. Same way that we took it out. Probably easier said than done because everybody loves these ribbon cables that Apple just wants to put on everything. Mm, one side's in. There we go. Okay, so that's back in. Good. You'll hear it click, and uh, once it's in, you kind of know it's in. Now we're going to go ahead and put our metal shield back on that we took off. Should slide in the same way. Uh, be careful to verify that uh, you're aligning the holes the correct way. Gotta make sure I do this properly now. Correct. We've got our ribbon cable coming out. It looks like our holes are aligned. Okay, so there's our shield. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the screws back in using our improper tool. It's always good to have an iFixit toolkit laying around, but unfortunately, I don't. Of all the people, I probably should have one. Usually, when you're working on PCs, all you need is a Phillips screwdriver, but with the modern Apple products, you're going to need everything from a torque toolkit to pentalobe screwdrivers, trilobe screwdrivers. Apple loves their making things difficult on technicians, unfortunately. So you're going to want a small screwdriver for this, probably a iFixit I think recommends a number two, but these almost look smaller than that. There it is. and tight. Now we're going to go ahead and put our airport card back in. Uh, looks like a standard 40 pin connector or so. So that should just slot in over here. Very standard. I believe it goes under this middle tab. I believe it's the right way up. Seems like it's slotted in okay. We've got our antenna here that needs to go back in. Go ahead and push that back in if we can. There it is. Perfect. Should go flush. This gets pressed down. This cable should probably be squashed by that. Yeah, the cable can go under there. The cable's fine. And then we just slot our keyboard back in. Like so. Okay, now we're gonna need to put our battery back in and then we'll power it up and see how it goes. Okay, so I've reattached the power adapter, put the battery back in, uh, and we're gonna see if this thing powers on. First power on text is always uh, the most important. Well, it didn't give a beep error code. It bonged, so that's a good sign. But is it booting off of 64 megs of RAM? That would be bad. It seemed like it. That was pretty snappy. Small volume click there.
We have boot. It's a good sign. That's actually pretty fast. Right in here, going to about this Mac. And there it is. Actually, we're at 640 megabytes of RAM. So this must have been one of the models that had 128 megabytes instead of 64 on the motherboard. I didn't actually know that. Well, what do you know? We got a little bonus out of it. When you're working with hardware this old, every megabyte counts because now you, nowadays you have PCs with 16 gigs of RAM, whatever. But no, I'd say that's very successful. I'll show a zoomed in... Uh, screenshot here but otherwise uh thank you very much for watching and i hope this guy was helpful to you again i'll link the proper ifixit guide in the description below because i understand that, that was probably not the most detailed um with full color images uh guide that you've ever seen but thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time